people. Welcome to the Lean In Podcast, where we have real conversations for real life. This is episode one, where we will lean into a conversation on addiction. But before that, I just want you to know that the Lean In Podcast is a production of Grace Online, the online community for Grace Christian Fellowship Ministries International. We are recording from the cultivated space. Shout out to Kristen and Taylor for being so generous and letting us use their space. Today, I am here with my sister, Pammy. Is it okay if I call you Pammy on this podcast? Okay, I didn't know, because sometimes she gets the video and tells me to call her Pam. So. I'm grown, so that's okay. <laughs> okay, so Pammy, you want to take a minute to introduce yourself to the listeners? Sure. Um, again, my name is Pammy, um, and I'm excited to be here on the podcast today. Yes, thank you so, so much for coming in. I'm just so excited to have you here. Um, so, before we get started, I just want to make sure that you feel safe to have a transparent and open conversation in this space. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm glad because I don't have another guest in the back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, do you... Do you have any personal experiences with addiction, like growing up or as an adult at all? I kind of know the answer to this already clearly because I'm her sister, but I'm asking for your sake. Right, for y'all. But for y'all. No. Um, I don't have any experiences with addiction as a kid. I mean, I've experienced, you know, having a parent that was addicted to drugs and alcohol, but like as a kid, I was never like, oh, I want to experiment with this. I won the um, Dare Writing Essay Contest in the fifth grade, so mm-hmm. you did. shout out that. Um, but yeah, like as a kid, I was just like, this it, this ruins families, even as a kid. Yeah. So like, this is bad. So, But as an adult now, they didn't talk about alcohol being in the Dare program. They, they talk about talk. uppers and downers, not liquors. So... <laughs> Our father was addicted to drugs. We're not here to tell his story because it's not ours to tell, but his story absolutely intersects ours. So, I mean, there will be mention of him. We, my father talks about his addiction and his recovery very openly. So, yeah. seriously, he would not be upset to hear us talk about it. Um, yeah. So, as an adult, you had do you feel like you were addicted to alcohol would you say that or i don't think i was addicted but i think i had a very close relationship with it more than i realized especially was trying to like deal with my feelings like instead of dealing with feelings i would be like i'll just have a drink or instead of just feeling like i could be myself or be honest with people i would blame it on like liquid courage like oh well i can't say what i really want to say so if I say this while I'm drunk, they're gonna be like, girl, you was drunk. Like, wow. Nah, that was on my heart, though. <laughs> I just couldn't say it. Right. I just couldn't say it plain for whatever reason. So, what have you done to be more bold about speaking your mind? You, you're not, you don't drink anymore. My sister, Pam doesn't drink anymore. She stopped drinking. How long have you not been drinking? Uh, since like December of 2018. It was like okay. before New Year's Eve, but after Christmas, so I don't remember like the actual day. Yeah. So, what have you done between then and now to be able to have the courage to say what you feel? Um, I've prayed a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I've been through some therapy. And also, honestly, truly, I had never planned on not drinking. Like, I just, you know, at the beginning of the year, I just try not to drink because I'm like, it's a sensitive time of year. Mm-hmm. A lot of sad stuff happens. Like, I don't want to, you know, fall back on that. Mm-hmm. But I had a dream that I was at one of my friend's birthday parties. And we were at a bar. And they were like, oh, you're not drinking? And I was like, no. And I was like, me at a bar not <laughs> drinking? And when you woke up. <laughs> Somebody stopped the phone. Uh-huh. So, like, and 
then it, it happened. I was at a friend's birthday party at the bar, and they were like, "You're not drinking? Like, do you have you already been drinking?" I was like, yeah. "I'm just high off life now." Okay, <laughs> and ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But I was like, "Oh, wow," because I had planned on getting back on your birthday. Like, uh -huh. like okay, April is here. <laughs> April is here. Like, I will have a drink. Yeah, we are definitely. Birthday. Yeah, and then catch up for the summer. That's what my problem was. Then I would feel like I need to re up because okay. of all those months that I wasn't drinking because emotionally I felt like, oh, I shouldn't do that, but I was doing it anyway. Right. Like just with everyday life. It's interesting to me that you stop drinking at certain points of the year that are like, that are like more emotionally sensitive for you, but when you felt like you were strong enough, mm -hmm. that's when you kind of leaned into it, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that is that is very interesting. So, do you? F oh, go ahead. I was gonna say. I feel like the reason that I would stop when it was like a obviously emotional time is because I was trying to hide it from other people too. Mm. So I felt like if people know, like, oh, this is the time of year, like you know, that somebody passed away, or that's just like your mom's birthday coming up, like a sad time of year like mm -hmm. they would know like watch her right yeah and I, I don't want to be watched right like, i mean you did you i didn't know that you had a drinking problem at all i didn't know that you i mean no kudos to me you best not good that's not <laughs> good but it's just just to let people know that you can literally be living in the same house with somebody mm -hmm. And not really recognize the things that they are going through personally. So it's just important to try to stay connected with people. Like, I mean, I feel like at the time we at least talked every day, even if we weren't together every day, yeah. we spoke every day. Like, mm -hmm. we lived under the same roof for most of that time. And I just completely missed it. And when you told me, like, okay, I was drinking and I stopped, I was like, Wait, I mean, we be having drinks. What, what do you mean? Like, so yeah, that was to for me. I kind of felt guilty and bad. Like, dang, how did I miss that? Like, so I mean, people who are on the outside who may not personally have the addiction, but have relationship to people that may be, you know, heading towards that or already deeply in the throes of addiction, like. You can end up blaming yourself for a lot of things, it's, mm -hmm. especially if, as a child, like, right, yeah. you know, um, but do you feel like now that you have a good support system around that or? Yeah, I think so. Cause that was also one of the things, like I wasn't telling anybody, like people knew I drank, but mm -hmm. nobody knew like that it was an issue for me. So mm -hmm. I just started telling people that I felt comfortable with like, Hey, like. I stopped drinking, this is why, like, so, just FYI. Mm -hmm. But I think that that was just even helpful for me, like, even though some people I didn't tell, like, the whole full details, but I still was like, hey, I, I'm struggling with this. That was even a lot for me just to admit it out loud, because I was like, I could stop whenever I want. I do this all the time, like, mm -hmm. but no, though. <laughs> so what kind of process did you go through to stop, like, do you feel like you had a rock bottom moment that was like, okay, now I must quit? Or what brought you to stop it? Um, kind of, sort of. Like, for me, I was like, it was just becoming too much. Like, I was hiding bottles so that nobody would know that I was drinking or buying my own personal bottles and going to different liquor stores. So, like, I wouldn't be a regular. <laughs> Some people would be like, hey, fam. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that was my telltale sign when I needed to lose weight. Cause I was going, I was ordering a lot, a lot, a lot of pizzas. <laughs> How many pizzas? Which is, I mean, the average American eats forty pizzas. I'd say sixty. Is that a real forty? Statistic? Like, I think they order like forty times a year or something. What? Where did you get this information? On chopped. Okay. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> I think it was something like that. I don't. Don't quote me. Okay. Don't quote me. Um, I'm literally. But yeah, quoting. so. The girl that worked at the pizza place, she, I guess, had a little summer job at Target. And she was like, hey, Pam. I was like, hey, girl. 
Like, I don't even know your name, pizza uh -huh. girl. And I was like, girl, she think you the pizza girl. <laughs> Okay. So I was like, they ain't finna catch me like that at this liquor store. Like, so right. I was going over all over the city. Like, not even joking. It's not funny. Not even joking. Like, I was in Newport. I was going out here. Like, mm -hmm. I gotta broaden my horizons. Mm -hmm. And I was like, girl, for some do say, like, <laughs> this is just too much. Yeah, I mean, it's too much. And one night where I, with my go-to was Hennessy, mm -hmm. and they didn't have any, so I was like. Well, I gotta get something like I'm already here. Like, mm -hmm. so that's how I got one to say. Okay, wow, that's crazy. Was, so, was that the crazy. rock bottom moment when you realized <laughs> you're crazy? Was that the rock, bo rock bottom moment when you realized, like, okay? Yeah, because I was like, at this point, like, now I feel like I have a problem. Okay. Like, if I'm just like, I can't go to my local Kroger mm -hmm. and get alcohol because I feel like, oh, they'll recognize me. Like, mm -hmm. I'm feeling all these feelings and nobody even probably even cares like people go to the grocery store all the time right like so I think that shame and guilt are two of the byproducts of addiction that people don't really talk about like mm -hmm. that you know and I think that is heavy I mean I can say especially like when we were growing up like my god I was so embarrassed that somebody would find out <laughs> you know that dad was addicted to drugs like that literally was something i worried about on a daily basis mm -hmm. like because it's like you have to keep it a secret yeah like and i feel like that's even more where i was like i'm not telling nobody this or i'll just drink socially but after a while the social drinking was me drinking from my own personal bottle mm -hmm. like i wasn't i would drink drinks with other people but like i'm gonna keep my bottle in the freezer though mm -hmm. like, so that's like that's too much. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. So do you feel like growing up, being raised by a parent that was addicted to drugs, do you think that had any impact on your own drinking or even just, you know, any impact on you emotionally? Um, I think definitely like emotionally because I just always felt like I wasn't enough or I felt like abandoned. Like Yes. And then as I got older, I started to realize, like, to look at it from, like, an uh, adult. Like, you're an adult man. Like, you're not just my dad. Right. Like, you're an actual human who lived life before I got here. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's issues that, you know, you're dealing with that you feel like this is the best way that you can solve it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I don't think as far as, like, me drinking it had anything to do with him. That was just kind of me personally just feeling like. I need something to help be myself. Like, mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of started doing it more. I mean, I think those two are related though, like, because if you felt like you had a low self worth, like you did not feel like you were enough, and then to get the boldness to speak your mind or say how you felt, you will use something else. Like, yeah. I think those two can seem related. I can say I definitely work through the same type of issues with self-worth because you just grow up feeling like somebody is constantly choosing something else besides, you know, you right. or the family. Like, so that is, self-worth is definitely high on the list of byproducts of addiction. Like, mm -hmm. And so, Tammy, I just really want to thank you for coming onto the podcast and for being so transparent, I know that it definitely had to be, you know, a challenge. I know that's probably scary, but I really think that your experiences and you being open about your experiences can probably help somebody else that may personally be dealing with, you know, just an addiction or maybe they're just doing something excessively that's not healthy for them. And I really feel like knowing that somebody else has been there mm -hmm. and overcome it is helpful so i really want to thank you so much for just bearing yourself okay thank you <laughs> thank you for allowing me to be your first guest on the potty yes okay. <laughs> um so the next segment of the podcast is called the wrap up this is a place where we will examine our topic and relate it back to the Word of God and to our faith 
Pammy, can you stay for the wrap up, hunty? Most definitely. Yes, okay. So, there is nothing new under the sun. Like, addiction is not something that just popped up in the 60s with the free love and all of that. Oh, right. like, this is not new. If you are listen, listening to this podcast and you are suffering from addiction, you are the relative, loved one of somebody, you are not by yourself. <laughs> this is not new. I don't know how much I can stress that. There are, you can even look in your Bible, there are people who dealt with drinking too much, like, you know, Noah, like, Lot. And you can look up the scriptures. Maybe I'll put them in the um, podcast notes so you can go and examine it for yourself. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Um, you know, and even people who indulge too much in other things, like, you know, Solomon, you know, your boy was out here... <laughs> Wives on wives on wives on wives. On wives. On wives. On concubines. You know what I'm saying? There are some issues there. And all of those things led the people away from God. But God still used all those people. So I don't want anybody to feel like because they have dealt with addiction. Mm -hmm. That they are somehow now unusable or undesirable. Your experiences can be used. And... One of my good friends says something all the time that just really resonates with me is that God don't waste pain. Like, mm -hmm. I heard that for the first time. I said, <laughs> okay, listen. Like, I... Come on. Come on. Please don't waste it. <laughs> Please. Like, seriously. So I know you said when you started to feel like this is getting out of hand, you went into a lot of prayer. Did you also fast or was it just, like, how did, what kind of prayer was your praying? Maybe asking Sierra, what was her prayer? Okay. No, what was your prayer? Let's see. Tell I was us. Just like, what was the prayer? For real, Lord, like, this is getting out of control. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just feel like it's doing too much. Like, something is wrong. This is not fixing whatever is wrong. Like, because that's what I will always say, which it just came back to bite me, myself. It's like, okay, if you, you know, are addicted, like, okay, you're just going to be high with whatever problems, like, you, mm -hmm. you're still going to have those problems, but mm -hmm. here I am just drunk with the same problems, mm -hmm. like, I'm just not thinking about it for whatever time period that I'm drinking, like, but then you come back to life, like, mm -hmm. you don't escape it, like, it's still there. You yeah, just, now you got a hangover. Well, well no, okay, maybe not, but... <laughs> But maybe you do. But maybe you do. And I, mean, I was just like, now you got a hangover and you still got the same issues that you yeah. had on Monday. At the end of but the day, yeah. no problems have been solved. Like, I really feel like, honestly, I really feel like if you submit thanks to God and prayer that he really will move. Like, yeah. sometimes it <laughs> may not come when you want them. You're always on time. <laughs> But That's seriously true. though, he it, it just may not happen exactly when or how you think it should, but I feel like a lot of times God will move. And not to say that for people who, you know, die in addiction or overdoses that God wasn't moving. That's right. not what I'm saying. Um, that's obviously extremely unfortunate and devastating. Like, mm -hmm. And for all the people out there that have experienced the death of a loved one due to an overdose, like literally my heart goes out to you um and i pray your strength um but yeah i mean i really do believe in the power of prayer and that it can change things and i think there are so many things that we try to hide from god like you try to hide your addiction like we are trying to hide stuff from god like we don't want to pray about it because we know the answer may be something we don't want to hear. Right, right. Or it may be something we feel like has too much power over us and he can't break. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's just real. I know people yeah. don't say that, but I, it's true. Like you say, you do hide those things in prayer. Like you pray about everything else or everybody else and skip yourself or right. skip the thing that you really need help with. Right. Like, and then really, honestly, I didn't really know how to how to even pray about it. Like, mm -hmm. hello, Lord, 
And I have, I have trouble with alcohol. I do. I pray about this. I like, mean, so how did you pray about? That's literally what I, I just asking. yeah. I I just was honest, like Lord, yeah. I this is getting to be too much, and mm-hmm. now I feel like I'm spiraling out of control. Like I literally felt like I'm in a a tunnel or a tornado, just spinning. Like that's how I felt, mm-hmm. and I was like, I don't know how to grab onto anything. So if you was out there. Please help me to grab onto something to be like stable or figure mm-hmm. out a way to stop doing this. Like, and that's when it was getting to be like you know December, and I think by then I was working like two jobs, so it was just like I, I don't have time. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't have time to drink. I don't have time to do it because the schedule I was working, I was at work back to back anyway. Like. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, sometimes the Lord will speak to me like as I'm sleeping in my dreams. So mm-hmm. like that, how I mentioned about seeing myself at a party, like, so it was kind of the same way with that, like, just stop. Yeah. Like I could just hear it in my sleep, like, just stop. I was like, just stop what? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, what you supposed to come down on the cloud, talk to me and tell me, like, do X, Y, Z. Like, okay just stop like, yeah yeah because sometimes things are simpler than what we try to make it like yeah. it's just easy like for me it was just that simple to be like just stop i think a lot of people have that experience and a lot of people have the experience of stopping and relapsing and stopping again and both are valid yeah i mean there's there is value in that struggle Mm -hmm. like and you earnestly not wanting to do that but addiction changes the brain it's not like you can just always make another choice i know that is the case for plenty of people who have been addicted to plenty of different things but and i mean it definitely was not something that was easy because even when i heard it in my dream i was like well i still have alcohol i'm not pouring it out (laughs) Like, so, and that's on me and cheap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's on not wasting. Oh, okay, yes, ma'am. Now you're not supposed to waste. Well, so, well <laughs> now, I was like, I'm not pouring this out. Okay. So it's still like it was still like okay, just stop. But also like people have birthdays, people have events. Like there's gonna be alcohol around, and sometimes mm-hmm. it was difficult where I would be like, I could make a Coco Loso Mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Or it's been times where I just feel like, oh, I'm so down, I'm so sad. This would be a time when I would make a drink or like, oh, I want cake or ice cream. I can make a Henny float. Like, Mm -hmm. that's just, you know, it's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) First of all, ice cream. You know, and you're like toast intolerant. Sorry to tell the people. You want me to edit it out. I'm going to leave it in. (laughs) Because you are too, amen. (laughs) Okay, since we air it out. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, so I, I don't say that to say that it was just simple. Like, right. okay, yeah. I just stopped drinking and that was it. Like, mm-hmm. it was, there was difficult times. Yeah, where I was just sure. like, Who's counting anyway? Like, then I'm like, well, if I count and say how long I've been sober, like, I'm really an addict. Like, it was just, you know, all kind of things where I was like, this is too much. And sometimes when things are too much for me, I just, I just will stop. Mm -hmm. Like, so. so, I mean, it's just amazing to see where you are now and how, how you have changed, honestly. Like, I, I have not seeing you be bashful to say what you think you may think twice about it um or maybe it's just my perception but i feel like you are much more bold and much more vocal now than ever which you know i appreciate for sure and just to see how god is now using this part of your life Mm -hmm. to hopefully help someone else you know so guys we will end this episode like we will end every episode, which is in prayer. So let's take a moment to clear our minds before we go before the Lord. Father, we thank you for every single person 
that is struggling with addiction right now. We pray that you would let them know that you are with them, Lord God. Give them a sign, a reason, an answer, even in this moment, Lord. We thank you for breaking chains, Lord God, and we thank you for coming through as you always do, right on time as you always do. We give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. We are looking forward to leaning into another conversation with you in two weeks. See you then.